And the testes then become the target of an immune response which causes what? Sterility. Sterility. Now, how can testicles become inflamed? Well, there's a couple ways. One, you can be kicked in the groin, which looks funny on TV, but it isn't funny in real life. And in this particular case, it can cause sterility. Another way is when little boys get a disease called the mumps. The mumps, which causes swelling of your glands. And of course, the testicle is just another gland. It causes them to swell. The blood testes barrier breaks down. The sperm leak out. Your body says foreign, develops antibodies to it, and attacks it. And that's how little boys can become sterile after getting the disease called the mumps. Mumps. Now look at this. All this free medical education here <laughs> on them. But it causes sterility. And whoa, look at this. This is a testicular biopsy from a guy who, doesn't, who had a broken down blood testes barrier. And look what you don't see. No sperm. No sperm. That's a sad case. Well, already you've learned about that blood testes barrier, but there are some other important functions which are necessary for the development of sperm. And that is those Sertoli cells. We already talked about those Sertoli cells which make the blood testes barrier. Now, you'll have, to, you'll have to excuse us in the medical world. We can't ever call something one name. We have to have like five different names. So Sertoli cells are also called sustenticular cells, or sometimes they're called nurse cells. But they name all these cells, but it's all the same cell. And they have an important role in nurturing the sperm as they develop. And here's another picture of these Sertoli cells. This is in the testicle. This is the cell. This is the cell here and it is nurturing these round spermatogonia. These, these cells are going to develop into sperm. And these cells right here are going to nurture them along in their development. Well, they're going to do four main things. First, they're going to support and protect and have nutritional regulation for the developing sperm. Why? Because those spermatocytes there, spermatids and spermata, spermatozoa, all of those are just different phrases for sperm as they develop, are isolated from the blood supply. And now you can tell your neighbors they're isolated from the blood supply because of the blood testes barrier. Right. The blood testes barrier is keeping them from the blood supply. Therefore, these spermatogenic cells depend on their Sertoli cells. Now, this makes sense. You know your blood is circulating around in your body and it's bringing a couple of very important things to your body. For one thing, it's bringing oxygen. It's carrying oxygen. It's carrying nutrients. It's carrying all those things that help your body stay alive and grow and survive. Now, sperm are isolated from that. So how do they get the oxygen? How do they get the nutrients? How do they get that stuff that they need to survive? Well, these Sertoli cells, which touch the blood supply, they take those very important things out of the blood, they bring them, they transport them through their cell, and they give them to the sperm as they develop without ever letting the sperm touch the blood supply. So they are acting as an intermediary, a go-between, which can do it safely. So they take those nutrients and they give them to the sperm, give them to the sperm, and the sperm never have to have contact with the blood supply whatsoever. So it protects them as they develop, but they nurse them along. Second, they do this thing called phagocytosis. Phago means to eat, and cytosis is the cytoplasm right there. Excess spermatocyte cytoplasm, it says, is shed as residual bodies, and the cytoplasmic fragments are phagocytized. That means they're eaten up by these cells right here, and they're broken down by Sertoli cells lysozymes. Well, let's look at a picture of what I'm talking about. Here we are. Here's a sperm cell, and it's developing. And you notice there has a lot of cytoplasm. That's a lot of fluid in the cell around the nucleus. But look up here at these sperm. They don't have much fluid at all in them. That's because as they develop these Sertoli cells, and this whole picture is a Sertoli cell, it pinches off. It pinches off big clumps of this cytoplasm and it puts it in little vacuoles and it combines it together with an enzyme called lysozyme and it breaks it down and it recycles it again so it can be used in another developing sperm. So it takes a round, big, fat cell and it takes off all the excess cytoplasm, all that extra weight, 
which can't be a lean, mean swimming machine, obviously, if it's like a big beached whale there. So it takes off all of that stuff and it pairs it down, pairs it down so it can be a sperm. And here's another picture of it. Here's what those cells originally start out like, just like other cells. They have mitochondria and all these little organelles inside of them. And through this process, they develop. This shows a process here of this sperm changing shape. It's growing the microfilaments in it. And look at this, it's resu all this extra cytoplasm here, it's being pinched off as residual bodies by these Sertoli cells. And eventually they develop into this shape, all the mitochondria come up here, and you end up with this nice swimming cellular missile through this process of transformation which is done by the Sertoli cells. That's an amazing thing. Complete change, complete change of shape of that cell altogether. And these Sertoli cells are what enable those sperm to change that shape and then they will develop. Well, there's another function. They do four main functions. They secrete this, androgen binding protein. Wow, what's androgen binding protein? Well, in man's bodies, they have circulating hormones called androgens. Andro, andros, man, right? You've heard of that. And we have a couple androgens, but the most important androgen that we have is testosterone. Yay. Now, how many guys, how do you, let's hear some cheers for testosterone. You know, that's a, that, there you go. Hey, all right. If you're real Broncos fans, you want to see some testosterone. And, you know, that's the, that's the hormone that makes men look like men. That makes us think like men, act like men, makes us manly. And that's the part that the women appreciate about us. And it's because of this circular, what's that laugh? <laughs> Good grief, I tell you, that wasn't, you're supposed to say amen. I love my man. <laughs> oh boy, this is, you're on tape now. Uh, all right. And so this protein, androgen binding protein, it binds what? Testosterone. It finds testosterone and it binds it and it concentrates it. And it's under the control of FSH. Wow, another hormone. 